As warmer weather heats up, so has the 2015 amusement park season. Thrill seekers across the country are gearing up to take on the latest and greatest rides. A theme park in North Carolina has just debuted the world's tallest and fastest roller coaster. Manufacturers often push the envelope to make the biggest and fastest thrill rides, but just how safe are they? And joining us now to talk about that is safety expert Ken Martin. Ken, thanks for joining us. Oh, you're entirely welcome, and thank you for having me. Well, first of all, this new coaster at Carowinds in North Carolina called the Fury rises 325 feet in the sky and reaches speeds of up to 95 miles per hour. Are ride makers compromising safety? Well, technically, no. Uh, you have to understand there's always a roller coaster race to see who has the highest, who has the fastest. Uh, you know, th th this particular uh, marketing gimmick that they're using may just be a mile an hour faster than last year's roller coaster or six inches higher than last year's roller coaster. So uh, a lot of it is just, you know, a, a marketing ploy to, to, you know, draw the crowds to that park so that they can say, hey, I rode that roller coaster. Okay. Well, last summer, unfortunately, a woman was killed at Six Flags in Texas mm -hmm. after she fell out of a coaster. What can you tell us about that case? Well, the coaster cases where ejections occur most likely have to deal with the coaster and the patron not meeting each other uh, somewhere in the middle. In other words, not fitting one or the other. Uh, coasters are designed kind of as a one-size-fits-all type of uh, coaster seat. And, you know, that's not exactly what each and every person who goes to amusement park looks like, one size fits all. You know, they're tall people, they're short people, they're large people, they're short, I mean, skinny people. You know, there's so many different sizes of people. So that's why it's so very important that you make sure that you fit in the ride uh, when you get on the roller coaster. So was that the case with the woman there in, in Texas that she was she didn't really fit the size of the, the Basic, seat? Basically, she was a little large for that particular coaster, and the seats were an average. The, the average roller coaster, just for your information, is designed to hold a 180-pound person. So you take 180 pounds, uh, you know, that, that feet that fits a very small proportion of the population that we have today. So it's, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, you as the rider, you are in fact the last inspector. You have to inspect that ride to make sure you fit in it, to make sure you follow the rules, that you follow all the verbal warnings that are issued to you by the ride operator. Okay. Well, the fact that coasters and other thrill rides are becoming faster and more extreme, have they also become more dangerous in your opinion? Well, they've become more dangerous because the public has to realize that these are, are pieces of machinery, and pieces of machinery are designed to push the limit. They're designed to, to take you to the edge and come back safely. That's what amusement parks are all about. We want to make sure we take you to the edge and bring you back safely because we want no one to leave an amusement park in an ambulance or worse. Wow. Well... Ken, who actually regulates the safety of these rides, and should there be stricter federal oversight? Okay, well, of course, you probably already know and your viewers know that there is no federal oversight over fixed amusement parks. Uh, oversight is left up to the handful of states that oversee fixed amusement parks. The portable rides that you see at your state fairs and county fairs, they are indeed covered by the Consumer Product Safety Commission and state regulations. Uh, for instance, in North Carolina, there's the, you know, Department of Labor who comes out and inspects rides. And of course, you know, the Six Flags Park in North Carolina is kind of unique. Part of it's in South Carolina, part of it's in North Carolina. Uh, you know, in, in Virginia, it's left up to the building inspectors. You know, the people who come out and inspect your houses and your buildings to make sure they're built to code. Uh, in Maryland, it's the Department of Labor. In West Virginia, it's a, a, a network of independent third party inspectors. Each state is different, and we look further north to Pennsylvania. Uh, our, our, our friends in Pennsylvania have an excellent safety record. They let the owners of the amusement park inspect their rides. Uh, the owners have to swear, or the inspector has to swear under oath, 
and that the rides are, are manufactured and, and engineered and operated to the certain standards that that particular ride is, you know, uh, that applies to that ride. So in each state, there's a different type of regulation. Some states, there are no regulations. Some states, there are lots of regulations. So it's just a really tough thing that we have to have so many different types of regulations in 50 states. Why couldn't we have one set of, of guidelines that would apply across the board? We just don't have that. Wow. Well, you actually suggested earlier that people inspect rides before they get on them. And real quickly, what are some things that people should be looking out for when they're about to get on a ride? Well, you want to make sure, first of all, that the attendants, the people who are operating the ride, are paying attention, not texting, talking on the phone, smoking a cigarette, you know, flirting with somebody. You want to make sure that they're paying attention to their job. Next, you want to make sure that you pay attention to everything they tell you to do. If you get in that roller coaster car and it doesn't feel right, you don't feel like you fit right, the seat belt's worn, uh, the harnesses, the lap bars, anything seems out of order to you, stop, say something, get out. Uh, you know, you want to make sure that that ride and its restraints are completely safe to hold you in that particular ride. And you also have the most important thing is, number one, you should not be getting on that amusement ride if you have medical conditions that might preclude you. Yeah. And those preclusions would be listed at the exterior or the entrance to the ride telling you, you know, if you have heart conditions, if you have, you know, lung problems, mm -hmm. if you may be pregnant or have been pregnant in the past few months, you may not want to get on this ride. Very, very important information. Ken Martin, thanks for joining us. Oh, you're welcome. Good afternoon to you. You too.